Hey guys, it's Crystal back at it again with another video and today I just wanted to let you guys know what classes I'm taking this semester just so that in case you're interested in going to Columbia University, which is where I'm a student, you can get a sense of what the classes are like and what I'm taking. I'm currently in the process of filming a week in my life of online classes so you guys are going to actually see what that looks like in just a couple days so definitely subscribe to get notified when that comes out and hit that notifications bell. But also I just wanted to give you guys a heads up about it and just walk you through it in case it's helpful to you. The first class that I'm in is Contemporary Civilizations. It's four credits, which is close to the max at Columbia. I think there are a couple of classes that might be four and a half or five, but basically that means that it's a lot of work. It's also a year long course. Most of our courses are semester based, so they only last about three months but Contemporary Civilizations definitely takes up the entire school year. And it's a required core course for all second year students at Columbia in the college, as opposed to like the School of Engineering and Applied Studies. The students from there can choose to take it as well as one of their approaches to the Classical Humanities core curriculum that we have. And basically we go over all the big philosophers in the West of the 20th century and all the way back. So like we even look at the Bible, we look at the Old Testament, we look at the Quran, all these really seminal texts, and then we work our way, not 100% chronologically, more thematically as well, kind of a combination of both, all the way up until, like I said, the 20th century. This is a required class. I have to say it's not 100% my favorite, but I do enjoy philosophy, especially at an upper level. This is more of a survey class, and I did learn a lot of it when I was in the Stanford University Online High School, which has actually been really good for me because it means that I'm already familiar with a lot of these super dense texts that we read that can be kind of hard to get through sometimes, and so I've been able to help some of my classmates and contribute to class, which is always great. And for a required class, it's pretty much as good as it can get. This is one of those college classes where you have very little homework except for heaps and heaps of reading. Like, we have two classes a week and we literally read pretty much an entire book for every single class, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it is so hard to go from Tuesday's class to Thursday's class unless you do the reading in advance. And then last semester we had three big essays that we had to write and then this semester it's two. When I say big, I mean big. My teacher in this section, like there are so many different sections and they're all a little bit different, but my teacher actually lets us write pretty much as long as we need to go and my essays have been turning out to be like 14, 15 pages lately, yeah. My second class is a psychology class called Thinking and Decision Making, and it's pretty much exactly what it says on the cam. So I'm taking this class as a prerequisite for one of my minors. So I'm minoring in what's called the Special Concentration in Business Management. I just made a video the other day reacting to my decision because I had to apply to get in and they just released decisions, so you should totally go check that out so emotional but I was super happy to get into that and I was already enrolled in this class just like manifesting that I would get in and hoping that I would be able to put it towards that concentration but even on its own it's super interesting so we go over normative and descriptive theories of choice and judgment risk perception decision modes and architecture and all the ways in which our psychology and heuristics and biases affect our ability to make decisions and choices it's really intriguing from the perspective of someone who owns a business and has to do marketing and I feel like it's really helping me in that area already before I've even truly gotten to dive into my business management concentration. I would wholeheartedly recommend this class. Also the professor is so nice. Her name is Dr. Fox Glassman. We call her Dr. FG. She tells us to come to office hours and she'll tell us stories about her children. Absolute goddess. 10 out of 10. Plus except for PE this is my only class that isn't a full two hours so it feels like almost a vacation when I'm taking it. Even though obviously the content is challenging, it's still really interesting and it's short, which is kind of rare in my curriculum right now. Next up, I am a creative writing major, so of course I'm taking advanced fiction workshop. At Columbia, in the creative writing major, you can either follow the track of fiction, poetry, or nonfiction, or you can do a cross genre track. So I'm doing fiction and poetry together. In advanced fiction workshop, everyone in the class submits two short stories of like up to around 15, 20 ish pages. It can even be as short as like eight, I think. Seven might be the minimum, I think. I'd have to go check the syllabus again. 
but it's really chill and fun because everyone there wants to be a writer in some capacity. Everyone is passionate about the emerging trends in literature. We've all read the same up and coming authors, which makes it really fun to discuss. We read some flash fiction pieces or short stories every week. We only meet once a week, which is more unusual for Columbia classes, which usually meet twice a week, but it's two hours. And then in each class, we workshop two people's short stories. So we read them beforehand and we write critique letters and we give them line edits. We post those onto Courseworks, which is our learning management platform online since we're doing everything online, of course. And then we workshop them in class and we provide constructive criticism and we, of course, talk about what we liked, but we really focus on helping them make their story better and then people have the chance to ask questions as well. So I've gone once so far this semester to be workshopped and then I have to write another story. Ugh, I have to get ideas for it. Mm. Guys, comment down below what you think I should write my next submission about. My other creative writing class this semester is Translation Seminar, which is once again what it says on the tin. So we translate works. Every three weeks we have to submit a translation of some poetry or some prose work and it can be from any language. You don't even need to know a second language to join. My primary languages of translation to English are Spanish and modern Greek and I would love to expand. I've also done some French. It's amazingly fun. I never did translation ever in my life before this class but I always wanted to because it's connected to different modes and philosophy that I'm interested in, especially postmodernism, and I really wanted to get a sense of what that was like and maybe even publish some of my translations in the future. And then every time we have a translation submission, we do three weeks straight, we have three different groups of workshopping each other's translations. We give each other, once again, constructive criticism and we tell them what we liked about it. And then we read all these different perspectives on how translation quote unquote should be, and there are a lot of conflicting perspectives, so that's why the air quotes around should, because it's an ever-evolving field and we're always adding to it. And as a class, we attended this amazing Columbia lecture on Zoom that had one of the poets who authored one of the translation works that we read, and it was really transcendent. It was such a great experience, and I'm really happy that I decided to give this class a try. I'm also taking Acting 2 Suzuki training, and this is a class that meets at 9 a.m. in the morning and is two Two hours long. So the fact that I actually absolutely love this class I feel is a huge testament to how amazing the content and the teacher both are. So Suzuki acting is a method that tries to get you grounded in your body instead of approaching acting from like a psychological perspective which is super popular in the West. One of my classes last semester was called Theater Traditions in a Global Context and that fulfilled one of the Columbia Core requirements for Global Core which is all about learning about classes that aren't just centered in the West. And I've been able to really see that in practice now in this acting class that I'm taking. This is my third acting class that I've taken at Columbia just because I really enjoy learning all the different kinds of arts and I wanna be good at all of them if I can. The only thing that I can't really do right now, or at least I haven't really tried it so far, is like the fine arts, drawing, sculpture. I do a lot of performing arts. I do a lot of literary arts haven't really dabbled in fine arts, but acting is part of my quest to try and learn as much as possible, but I've actually really fallen in love with it, and maybe when we go back to Columbia in person, I might audition for some of the performances that we have. I think Suzuki will really help with that. It's actually almost like a hardcore workout for the first half of every class, and then there's only one other person in the class, and then we work on our scene work together. We're doing Macbeth, and we switch the genders, so I'm playing Macbeth, and my scene partner is playing Lady Macbeth. So. It's really cool. I feel like everyone in that class is so dedicated, like everyone, the few people in that class, are so dedicated to making it a great environment and we all feel a great sense of responsibility since it's so small and we all really work as hard as possible to show our best acting. And finally, I just got out of this class earlier today. I'm in ballet for. So Columbia has ballet and different dances as things that you can register for for PE or of course if you're a dance major then of course you're going to be taking those. I'm not a dance major but I love taking ballet for my PE requirements because I've danced ever since I was a little kid then I took four years off or so and then I returned to it when I was a freshman at Columbia and it's been amazing to get back into it. You guys will see me do a little in my week in the life vlog that's coming out soon so if you want to see me trying and hopefully succeeding. I don't know, it's been a while since I really trained hardcore, but definitely check that out. I do it twice a week. It's my other class that's not a full two hours. We do an hour and like 15 minutes. Yeah, an hour and 15 minutes. And we go over pretty advanced elements of ballet, 
honestly less advanced than usual because most people don't have a wide open space in their homes to do it. Oh yeah, we do ballet over Zoom. I have a portable ballet bar, thank goodness. I had one from before just because I always liked to practice when I was at home and so it's been really, really helpful. And I clear out a space in my family room and I do my ballet. Columbia goes up from ballet one through ballet six. They do that with most of their different dance styles. And like I said, I'm doing ballet four right now. So I'll probably take that again next year because I love the teacher. She's hilarious and just darling. Ballet teachers get such a bad rap as being mean and scary. And honestly, that's not always a lie, but she is the kindest ballet teacher I've ever had in my life. So I wanna actually hang out with her in person next year, hopefully. And then I might also add on ballet five because I really like it. It forces me to exercise, especially during quarantine, which I feel like is so important. That's why I'm taking ballet and acting right now so that I can make sure I'm staying as healthy and fit as possible and getting exercise in my life and not just succumbing to being super sedentary in quarantine. Those are all the classes that I'm in right now, but I am in my fourth semester here at Columbia. So if you want to hear about classes I've taken in my other three semesters, I would be happy to make videos on them too. I feel like that would be super fun. I've seen a couple of other college YouTubers do that, go back into the past and talk about those classes that they've already finished. I'm nearing the end of the spring semester here at Columbia because it's ending in April, and then we have a summer term that starts in May. And I'll also be taking classes then, so I'll be sure to do lots of vlogs. But let me know if you want to hear about about my earlier years and semesters as well. I would love to revisit them, it would be so nostalgic. And don't forget to vote for me in the FedEx Small Business Grant Competition. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more Columbia content and content about universities, the Ivy League, how to succeed as a high schooler in general, and hit that notification bell to make sure that you're notified every time I post. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!